Okay, so look at this rear end. I mean, really look at it. It's got this vertical disconnected vibe, kind of channeling that EQXX concept from a few years back, but slapped onto a blocky SUV. It is definitely a choice. This is the all new 2026 Mercedes GLB. And if you're confused because you thought the GLB was the gas one and the EQB was the electric one, well, welcome to the new naming convention. The EQB is effectively dead. This GLB replaces it. And for now, it's ditching gas completely. But putting the name aside, the specs here are actually pretty serious. We're talking about an 800 volt architecture, which is huge for charging speeds, and a solid 85 kilowatt hour battery. Mercedes is claiming 392 miles of range for the single motor version. Even if we adjust that down for real-world U.S. highway driving, that is a very usable number for a compact luxury SUV. So, you've got two flavors at launch. First, the GLB 250 Plus. That's your range king. Rear-wheel drive, 268 horsepower. It does 0 to 60 in about 7.4 seconds, not breaking any records, but plenty for a daily driver. Then, you step up to the 354 Matic, dual motors, all-wheel drive, nearly 350 horsepower. You lose about 10 miles of range, but you drop that zero to 60 time down to 5.5 seconds. That's the sweet spot for most people. Now let's go back to the design for a second because the dimensions have changed. It's physically bigger in almost every direction. It's nearly four inches longer than the old GLB and the wheelbase has stretched by over two inches. That means the second row actually has legroom now. And finally, we get a frunk. It's small, like 4.5 cubic feet. But hey, cable storage is cable storage. But the interior, that is where Mercedes is trying to flex. They've brought over the super screen. We're talking three displays stretching across the entire dash. And the software running this thing, it's built on the Unity game engine. Yes, the same engine used um, for video games. Plus, they've integrated uh, ChatGPT 4.0 into the voice assistant. So theoretically, you can have a full-blown conversation with your car about, I don't know, the meaning of life while you're charging. Is that necessary? Probably not. Is it cool tech? Absolutely. Price-wise, we only have German numbers right now converting to around 68 to 72,000 US dollars. If that holds up when it lands here next year, it is not cheap. There is a hybrid coming later and a cheaper entry-level EV, but for now, this is a premium tech product first and a car second. Overall, it's a bold pivot. They kept the boxy shape we liked, added some controversial lighting, and absolutely packed it with silicon. Let me know in the comments. Are you feeling that rear end design or is it a deal breaker? That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.